How many of you deal with pride? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. How many of you are proud that you deal with pride? That's hilarious. Um, we all deal with pride, right? And uh, it's, it's very difficult because it's part of human nature. You know, I can just see, you know, Sister Della looking at me here on Sunday morning getting ready for church and saying, you're not too bad looking cow there. You know, uh, we, all, we all have our issues. And uh, I've had mine. And I, I have been so uh, inclined lately to talk about how pride has um, entered into my life at times and, and how that I've had to deal with pride. Today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about how important it is to kind of get this straightened up in our life and to realize who we are and where our resources come from and that we are who we are because of God. What happens when you are saying this? Oh, it is. Amen. There's no self-made people here. Right? Everything you have comes from where? And if you're good looking like me, there's that pride thing again, right? My mom's frowning at me and shaking her head. You know you're in trouble then. So pride comes before destruction and the haughty spirit before a so, when, when, when you are in a um, situation where pride takes over, you're setting yourself up. And that's the, that's the kicker. I mean, we don't realize that until somewhere along the way in life, God, God gives us an understanding of, of this, you know, problem in our life. And so... I want to bring some scriptures to you. We want to talk about that. Uh, Psalms 100 is where we're going to start. And uh, it is, I think, a very important psalm to read. There's some really important information here. So mark it down in your Bible as one of those scriptures you're going to go to from time to time. All right? Let us read together Psalms 100, verse number 1, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. How many find yourself making joyful noises. Some of you can't sing. You're not fooling anybody. We stand next to you, you know. It's all joyful to God. That's right, sis. So we're making a joyful noise. Uh, Roxanne would probably tell you when, when Joe, I, I know Joe's kind of got some stuff about him that a lot of people don't know because I call his phone and I hear this da, 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 da. anyway, I can't even do it justice, but he's got those love songs on his phone from the 70s and uh, you know uh, he probably sings in the shower doesn't he Roxanne? Does he sing to you? Makes a joyful noise you know when we get in heaven when we get in heaven so we're going to have a voice like an angel. Yes. That's, right. That's the good news. Because we get glorified bodies, right? right. So, so in that, I'm just envisioning and I'm claiming it in Jesus' name. Amen. That when I get to heaven, I'm going to be able to say, Bob, I'm going to be able to really bell it out there. And the angels are going to say, whoa, dude, look at that guy. Yeah. But here, I'm making a joyful noise. <laughs> Everybody. Everything that hath breath is to do what? Praise the Lord. And we praise Him in our singing and with our instruments and with our music and with our dancing before Him. The Lord loves people who enjoy their salvation. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. Yeah. Yeah. Try it. You'll like it. Right. It's a whole lot better than being sad. That's right. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before His presence in with singing. That's why I love a church like this. It's because you come in here and one of the first things you notice is that we're called Tabernacle of what? 
Praise. So when you come in here and you come to a church that's called Tabernacle of Praise, what are you going to hear when you get here? You're going to hear some music, you're going to hear some praise, and you're going to hear sometimes, you know, people kind of get exuberant. And, and I think we live up to that name, and I hope we can always can say that, that we are a people of praise because that's what God wants. He wants our praise. It makes him happy when we praise him. So we're to come before his presence with singing. We're to know that the Lord, he is God. Yes. Turn to your neighbor and say, you're not God. You're not God. Or to heaven and say, he is God. Yes. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that has made us. And not we ourselves. Amen. He made me. Tabitha. He made me. I didn't make myself. I, I do well to get up of a morning. I'm a mess up. I confess. If, I, if there's any good in me, it comes from Him. It's He that has made me. And not me that made me. That's right. I can't do anything well That's on right. my own. It takes right. God yeah. in me yeah. to make me yes. able to function. Yes. yes. And the more you realize that, the better off you're going to be. Because you're going to start seeking for God every day and say, God, I can't do this on my own. That's right. Because I make a lot of mess. I like to make a lot of mistakes. And by the way, you know, without the Lord, all this charisma you see just kind of goes away. I'm smiling. I'm obviously trying to tell a joke. So anyway. <laughs> it is He that hath made us and not we ourselves. So I want you to, I, I want you to start thinking that way. I am who I am. I have what I have. Everything about me depends on Him. Yes. Amen. In Him we live. Watch me. Yes. Beth, I'm watching you. In Him, she likes me. In Him we live, we move, yes. and we have our being. Yes. We exist because of Him. That's right. Look, you're made up of atoms and molecules. The Lord is the source of everything. Yes. He wills you into existence. That's right. And without Him, you wouldn't even be saved. That's right. right. That's, right. Yeah. That's why it's not a, a long, far stretch to believe that God can still do created miracles. Right. Yeah. That's right. Because He holds everything together in the first place. Yes. He's still creating. Yes, He is. He hasn't stopped creating. That's right. That's right. You know. So in Him we live, we move, we have our being. He gives to all life and breath and all things. So everything, how many things? Oh. Everything you have comes from who? Oh. Your job, your home, your food. Yes. Everything you have comes from God. So go home, look around your surroundings and kind of visualize, this wouldn't be here if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't have anything if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't have my beautiful spouse if it wasn't for God. I wouldn't have anything. I would... And then the other thing is it just makes you thankful. You just start to worship and praise God because He considers you in life. And He does all these wonderful things for you. Because He, he loves you. You know. So it's He that made us... And not we ourselves. I like that. I, I, I like to remind myself of that. He made me. And then it says, we are His people. So today we're going to talk about how we belong to God. Say it, I, I belong, belong to Him. Put your little finger up. I belong to Him. I, I, just, it's, I don't belong to me. I don't belong to you. Important. Turn to your neighbor and say, I don't belong to you. I belong to him. I don't belong to him. I may be married to you. 
but I don't belong to you. I'm not, I'm not your possession. I belong to God. I'm married to you, but I don't belong to you. I'm your pastor and serve you, but I don't belong to you. I belong to him. I belong to God. He's my source. Amen. So, let's go ahead and read a little further. It says, We are the sheep of his pasture. You are his sheep. You don't belong to me. Or this church. You attend this church. Yeah. Some, some people say I belong to that church. Well, be careful with that, right? We I, I love for you attending here and I want your faithfulness, but you belong to God. You're the sheep of his pastor. You gotta be careful how you follow man. Hello. You honor authority, you give yourself to authority, you walk in the dimensions and the places God wants you to walk, but be careful because there's a lot of people that fall under this delusion that somehow that their pastor or their church is their salvation, and guess what? It's not that way at all. We're the sheep of His pastor. I belong to God. Therefore, if Pastor Tyner has a moral dilemma and he fails tomorrow, my world is not going to quit. That's right. Oh, you need to hear that, right? If the church will dissolve, to dissolve in the next couple of weeks, God forbid. But if it, if it did, you should not feel like your world is coming to an end because you are the sheep of His pasture. Give the Lord a hand clap. Now here's, here's the thought. Here's the thought. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Should that still happen? I'd like to see some of you start doing that. When you come to church, just get happy, rejoice, praise God, walk in the door with praise in your heart. You talk about some services, man. We would have some services. Some of you wait till we crank it up. I come to church so you guys can crank me up. I just love it when Amy gets up there. I get so excited. You need to be excited when you come in here. And her, I was watching her a while ago. I come up here and she just sweat up a storm. That's my little girl, you know. And, and I, I told her, I said, take a break, girl. Wipe your breath. You're trying to be everybody's cheerleader. You need to come in here with thanksgiving. And to his courts with praise. And be thankful unto him. You know God's been good to you. I said, you know God has blessed you. God has anointed you with the Holy Ghost. Do you know that angels desire to have what you have? Do you know the Old Testament prophets wrote about it because they couldn't have it, but you got it? Turn your neighbor and say, I got the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. You should be the happiest people on the face of the earth. Should nobody have to crank you up cheerily for you to give God a praise? Hallelujah. Because you belong to Him. You're His people. And He loves you. Thankful to Him and bless His name. For the Lord is good and His mercy is everlasting and His truth endures to all generations. But you belong to God. Second. Or 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse number 19 says, What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which you have of God, and you are not your own? You know, sometimes people get a little myth when you start talking like this. I mean, because they're not used to people saying that in this generation. In this generation, we are taught differently than that. You're a self-made person. You can be anything you want to be. Don't let anybody, you know, do this. And, and, and we start buying into that. We're told that way in grade school. Be whoever you want to be. You can achieve great things. Yeah, you can, but where does it come from? That's what we need to be told. 
Don't you know that you're in the temple of the living God? Yes. That God has blessed you, that God is in you, and you're not your own person. That's it. Yeah. You belong to Him. Why? Because He redeemed you. You've been bought with a price. Yes. I said, You've been bought with a price. This church is blood bought. You are blood bought. You've been redeemed by the Lord. He loves you enough where He purchased you with His own blood. Turn to somebody and say, I belong to Him. I belong to the Lord. We are the temple of the living God. What an honor. See, I would gladly, will gladly replace all of my pride with just the knowledge that I have become the temple of God. That the Holy Spirit dwells in me. Yeah. That's enough. Yeah. I don't want to worry about all the things that I have accomplished. Have you ever been around people tell you all the things that they've accomplished? Yeah. Yeah. They got to tell you. That's right. That's right. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you're around people like that and you just want to you know, do the gag thing, you know. <laughs> I was overseas and I was supposed to preach at this church and some wires got crossed. I did end up preaching in a couple places, but anyway, matter of fact, I was supposed to show the slides today, didn't get done. Come see me and I'll show you slides of Trinidad. Some of you have seen them. But, but anyway, I was supposed to go preach at this church and I got there found out that the wires were crossed and this gentleman got up to preach. Half a world away, I don't have to worry about you even knowing who this is, so I'm just going to be honest with you. I sat there and I, I had a couple people with me and we traveled across the island over bumpy roads and I, when I'm talking about bumpy roads, folks, the worst roads that you've ever been on in your life are like a paved highway compared to what they drive on every day. There were some roads that washed out that they literally paved through the washout, six feet down, and like this and around like that. And I said, Are "You got to get you. You got to be kidding me. Nobody in his right mind doesn't fix the road and just paves over the place where it washes out." And that's what they done. And so, I mean, we're beat up with a ride over there. We get over there. And, and find out that, that they'd made a mistake. So anyway, somebody said, would well, you, you want to go? And I said, no, we, we got here. It would be rude of us to leave. We're going to stay here and enjoy a message and, and be thankful for it. And I, I was hoping that it would be good. <laughs> <laughs> and this guy gets up, this older gentleman, uh, elder statesman, and just think of all the good things you can talk about with Jesus. Yeah. Just think about all the words you could bring, right? And we got about an hour and a half of all the things that he was involved in and how these kids were going to this college. And in that environment, you know, that's a big thing. But it was just all it is about all the ministry, all the things in his life. And you could have it if you pour in. Um. And I went. I can get this on TBN seven days a week. That's awful of me. I'm sorry. But it's fundraiser time for some stations, and I'm burned up with it. I just. If you'll just. I call it the spiritual library. If you'll just send a hundred dollars, we believe for everybody that sends a hundred dollars, God's going to give you tenfold back. I got a word. Spiritual library. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Some of them are really good at it too. They they get them on each station has them over that one person. They'll go out for four or five. You you and I know one. I'm talking about it, right? But 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 I just I wanted to gag. I'm thinking, man. We could have said so many good things about Jesus and about the Word of God and found our place with Him. But, but people that have this mentality, I believe they're convinced that somehow they're the master of their own destiny and they're not. We need to humble ourselves before the mighty hand of God. Because if we're not careful, if we lift ourselves up, God's going to bring us down. You know why I can tell you that? Because He's done it to me. For my good. Yes. He has blessed me 
by taking away some stuff. Because he said, you know what? You were so prideful, you thought you did it. We bought with a price. And the word says, we didn't bring anything into this world. You don't bring anything out. It's not the guy that has the most toys that wins, right? Hallelujah. The most precious thing in the world is your salvation, and that was bought for you. Amen. Praise God. The most precious thing you have in this world is the fact that you have Jesus in your life. Amen. If you're going to brag about anything, say, thank God for my salvation. Thank God that I got the Holy Ghost. Thank God that He loves me. Thank God I'm His child. I have a pedigree. But it's all because of Him. Because He adopted me. Right. He chose me. Yes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everything I have comes from God. Turn to St. John chapter 15 real quick. Everything comes from that connection. Everything comes. When you're a child of God, especially you ought to know this. God blesses even those who are outside the church. They live and they breathe and they have their being because of God just as well. But the church ought to acknowledge Him in all of your ways. Acknowledge Him. Trust in the Lord with how much of your heart? All of your heart. Don't lean to your own understanding. You, you've got to understand that, that in yourself there's no good thing. That's what Paul said. In me, there's nothing good. I've got everything from God. Hallelujah. So I trust Him and God is going to bless me before that. Because of that, because of that, He's going to give me health and it's going to be, you know, a strength to my bone marrow. And He's going to give me all these wonderful things in my life because I'm connected to Him. That's the reason why I'm blessed. The world doesn't know where their source is. I know where my source is. My source comes from God. I know that the Lord is God. Yes. I am the vine, he says, Jesus says. And my father is the farmer, the husband. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. Look at your little hands here. Just turn them around here. Just be a fruit inspector just for a minute. I want you to start doing that. Because you're supposed to be bearing fruit. Right. What is the fruit? What is the fruit? The fruit of the Spirit is love, gentleness, goodness, temperance. You're supposed to be bearing fruit. You're supposed to be evidence of the Lord in your life. So, there ought to be seeds that I'm planting that's coming up and bringing a harvest. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I should be seeing some spiritual things coming, awakening in my life. And if I'm living in a vast wasteland of spirituality, I need to wake up and say, wait a minute, hold on here, something's wrong. Because I'm supposed to be showing forth fruit. And I can't do that on my own. All the good things that I can think of. I'm a visionary, Jim. I'm a visionary. But all the good things I can think of, my mind's constantly working. i got themes going on. I can sit down and tell you, you can tell me a business, I'll give you a theme. You need to do this, you need to... And it all sounds real good, but let me tell you something. If it's not for that little spark of energy that comes right. from the Holy Spirit, right. it's not going to amount to anything. Right. You can be a visionary all day long, but unless you connect what you vision into the Holy Spirit, it's not going to, not going to really be fruitful. So what our purpose is, is to manifest fruit in our life. So what we, what we do is what our hand finds to do, we do with our mind. But... Let me give you a little something. This will help some of you. The Bible said, prove all things and then hold fast that which is good. So if you're putting your energy into something and it's not manifesting fruit, don't be afraid to say, I'm going to go in another direction. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah. And some people get upset when you do. They say, well, your church, did you do this and you do that and you do the yeah, other? Because some stuff don't work. Right. We tried it. No fruit here. Amen. Give the Lord a hand clap. I, I know I'm going on today. I'm watching the time. You're good. You're good. You're fine. Okay. That's a new one. I gotta remember that one. And every branch in me that beareth not fruit, he takes away. And every branch that beareth fruit, he purges it. That it can bring forth more fruit. How many's ever had that happen? Yeah. Nobody? Yeah. You mean God had pruned on you yet? <laughs> <laughs> Amy's saying, be still. Say, say. prunes on you. Well, what does that do to your pride when he prunes on you? Anybody, anybody ever been there? Does it feel good? You don't walk around and say, Oh, he pruned on me. Thank you, Jesus. He cuts his stuff off. I'm bleeding. I'm hurting. My apple tree doesn't thank me when I prune it. My apple tree bleeds that sap and runs down the side and I look like, oh man, I hate hurting you like this, but it's for your good. That's it. That's it. Because if I didn't prune on you, right. next year you're not going to produce the fruit that you could. That's it. Right. Right. Somebody here, evidently in your mind, you're thinking, you know what, I'm good without being pruned. And there's a lot of people that would go somewhere where they don't get the pruning instruments out. Because I, I just get really uncomfortable when, the, you know, I go somewhere and they talk about sin or holiness. Because every once in a while they get on something and I just assume them, just leave that alone. No, honey, you're, you're at the right place. Come somewhere where every once in a while they get the pruners out. Right. And they don't miss you. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. But anyway, God has pruned me. And every time He does, it ouches and stings, and I don't like it. And sometimes I wonder, God, why are you doing this to me? Because I really thought that was going to be part of my life. And I really thought that this was going to be a blessing. And then you just take it away. I've been reminded of that even today. And I'm thinking, God, did I do something wrong? <laughs> Anybody ever ask that question? Yeah. Yeah, and what's the answer to that? No. He loves you, and so He's just taking care of that for you, because if He didn't do it, you wouldn't. Right. 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 <laughs> right. Yeah. You belong to Him. That's it. Amen. You need to be glad, because you wouldn't fix yourself. That's right. You wouldn't do it. Because you get, you're like me, you get comfortable. You get these comfort zones where everything is cool and you don't want anything to change. Well, somewhere along the line, we've got to say, okay, wait a minute, I'm connected to Him, so God, anything you want to do, because you're the farmer, I'm just the, the, the branch, and I'm connected to the vine. Now, he said, now you're clean to the word that has been spoken to you. I abide in me and I in you and the branch cannot bear fruit of itself except you abide in me. No more can ye except you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abideth in me, I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. I just wanted, that's the point I wanted to get to. Without God, you can't do anything. Right, that's right. Say it with me. Without God, I can't do anything. Without Him, I would be nothing. Jim shaking his head for a minute. Without Him, I would but fail. Without Him, I would be drifting like a ship without a sail. Somebody knew where they were, what they were talking about when they wrote that, right? 
I, without him, I wouldn't have anything. I wouldn't be anybody. I couldn't do anything without him. So I need to understand that. One of the biggest downfalls in life is our pride. I want to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. We're closing here. In the next few minutes, we're going to move on. But I want to bring this little tidbit of information to you. Because for some of you, you've obtained some things in life. And God has blessed you. And that's a good thing. God has blessed you because He's found something in you that He desired. He loved you before the foundation of the world because He knew you before the foundation of the world. And God called you out because He chose you. He loves you enough to choose you. You didn't choose Him. He chose you. Don't get that messed up. You say, well, I gave my heart to the Lord. That's right, you did. But He's the one that chose you. And without Him, no man can come to the Father except the Spirit draws Him. God drew you to His self. God brought you to a point of where you received Him. And it was all these combination of things in your life that did that because God is so magnificent to be omniscient. He knows everything in life. He knows the beginning from the end. Aren't you excited? Excited about that? Aren't you impressed with God? That God already knows these things. He knew Trish before I did. He knew her while she was still in Utah. And yet he brought her here and he said, Here, you two get together. Wow, God, you are so mighty. You're so good. You knew all these things and how it would fit. Mark, he knew all about your life. And yet through all the disappointing things, God had His hand on you Amen. to bring you to this moment in your life. Amen. I'm impressed with God. Amen. Paul had got on a journey with the Lord. He found, you know, Jesus on the Damascus Road or the Lord found him. Right. Knocked him off his donkey. Began to deal with him. And because of that, he changed his life. And he said, everything right. that I counted for good, he said, I got rid of I counted it as rubbish that I can right. find God. Right. And I can know him in the power of his resurrection. So he began to ask God for stuff. God, show me stuff. And in the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, he takes us into this verbiage and some of it's really kind of hard to understand but he said I, I want to tell you about this event in my life but I won't, don't really want to tell you that it was me that it happened to because I don't want you to think I'm prideful when I talk about it. But this guy that I'm going to tell you it's actually me. Right? What he's saying. What he's saying. He got called into the third heaven. And I'm going to paraphrase. You can read it. He got called into the third heaven. Now I want you to think about that. What an honor. Amen. To be asked up. It's kind of like John the Revelator. Right. You see right. him in chapter 4. And a door's open in heaven. Right. And he says, come on up here. Mercy. Who said God said that? Can right. you imagine God saying that? Come on. <clears throat> this door's open so you can see. Yes. I want you to see something. And so Paul gets called up into the third heaven. He said, I don't know whether I was in the body or out of the body. It's having an out-of-body experience. I can't tell you whether it was that way or not. I just know I was there, man. Right. And all these things were revealed to me. And I've seen all these great things that God said I can't talk about. <laughs> I can't even talk about it. But I've seen it. And it was good and powerful and gave me a lot of revelation. Why did he need revelation? Because he's writing in God's book. That's why he needed revelation. And God don't just invite anybody to write in his book. He needed to be a man of revelation. So all these things that you read in the book were written down by holy men of God as they were moved on by the yes. Holy Spirit. Yes. Aren't you right. glad? Yeah. It wasn't just somebody writing a bunch of letters that was completely inspired by people that had a revelation from God. Yes. Right. So when he was writing, you know, in Ephesians, one of the deepest books in the Bible, all these yes. wonderful things, powerful things, Paul had one of the greatest revelations of Christ, the preaching right. of Christ, of any man that ever walked the face of the earth. Yes. And he did so because God brought him to that yes. place. Yes. Okay. 
So, so he's saying, um, I saw things that I couldn't write about, but he said, because of that, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh. A messenger of Satan yes. to buffet me right. or to keep me out of my pride. Now I wonder how many times we're facing things in our life that God's descending to keep us out of our pride. Thorn in the flesh. Turn to your neighbor and say, you might be my thorn. <laughs> Some of the looks that I'm seeing from here. They keep you humble. Greg, they keep you humble. Because you're the one that sings, Oh Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. Thorn in the flesh to buffet him. And he said, I prayed three times that it be removed from me. And finally he got a word from the God. And God says, Now wait a minute. You don't understand some of the things that's happening to you. But he said, this is my grace, and my grace is sufficient. Yes. Right. Yeah. So part of walking with God is just knowing that he's got this, and he's, when you're going through the learning process, you're going through yes. this thing. You belong to him, and he's trying to take care of you. Yes. He's trying to watch after you. And I'm preaching to some people right now because that's where you're at in life. Yes. God is your source, and you know that. Yes. You, you figure that out. But now you're going through some things and you want to point your finger to God and say, God, this is your fault. God, what are you doing to me? God, as you start murmuring and complaining, you, you got to be careful because you're going to be subject then to more uh, of God's um, chastening because He chastens those who He loves. And God will not leave you in a delusion. God will finally wake you up and say, now wait a minute, I'm going to have Pastor Tyner get up and speak on this so you know where you're at. Okay. So quit your complaining. Know that God's got this. And God sometimes will allow things to happen in your life because He says, my grace is sufficient for you. And notice this next thing. He said, my strength is made perfect in your weakness. So when, when you get the snot knocked out of you and your pride gets knocked down a, a notch because you thought you were something. Brad, he thought us that thou was a humdinger, but thou word is not. That's a joke that him and I share because we know of the, of, of the person that, that got prophesied to. Uh, it is it is a thing, you know, an absolute thing where, where you know, at times we've got to get the snot knot out of us to where we realize that we didn't, we're not really all that, you know. And sometimes when we think we got this big revelation, I remember early in my ministry, I was starting to get called out to preach revivals. I preached one revival. It was a longer revival. I'm not going to say it because I don't want to sound like I'm bragging how long it went on. Okay. That's how humble I am right now. I'm going to tell you how long the revival went on. But I was convinced that I was everybody's man of God, that I had revelation that was so deep. And I began to talk about the end times and I'm telling people about how everything was going to line out in the end times. And I was convinced I had it. Until one day, I started reading the Word of God and God said, you tell me, you had no idea what you were talking about. What business did you have to tell those people something that wasn't even the truth? You need to go back and apologize to those people because you thought you were something that you were not. And I got to humble you. So you got to be careful with that kind of stuff. You don't know near what you think you know. You're not nearly as good as you think you are. Right, that's right. God said it's just by my grace. My grace is sufficient for you. But my strength is made perfect in your weakness. When you're weak, that's when you're strong. When you are convinced that I can't do anything on my own, that I need him, that's when you got it. That's where you're supposed to be. Is to realize your source comes from God. And you are. He exists. Yeah. And because of that, right. 
right way. Because of that, God can use you. Because you belong to Him. You belong to Him. I belong to Jesus. I belong to Him. Know that the Lord is God. Yes. Yes. It is He that hath made us. Amen. And not we ourselves. <laughs> We are the sheep of His pasture. Yes. You're the temple of the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Lord. And you've been bought with a price. Yep. And you are not your own. Thank you, Jesus. And your strength, your history is made perfect in your weakness. Yes. Your source is only from God. Let's just lift our hands this morning. And I, I want you to say, God, I, I thank you for your goodness. Because I'm not worthy. I don't know enough. I don't have enough ability to do anything. But I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Hallelujah. Give me my hand clap.